Math 10 graphing, general form part two. Number one, determine the slope of a line given its equation in general form. So how do we find the slope of a line when the equation is in general form? Well, we convert it over to another form where we can find the slope. The easiest way to do this is to put it into slope intercept form. Now slope intercept form is where y is isolated on one side. So my first step is getting y alone. How do I get rid of negative 4y from the left-hand side? I add it to both sides. I now need to get rid of the 4. The 4 is being multiplied by y, so to get rid of it, I'm going to divide both sides by 4, giving me 3 over 4x plus 7 over 4 equals y. I now know the slope of this line is the number in front of the x, or 3 over 4. And that would be my answer. All right, stop this recording now and try B, and I'll do it in a minute. All right, we're back. Again, I'm going to convert this to slope intercept form to find the slope. So I need to isolate for y. To isolate for y in this situation, I'm going to subtract 5y from both sides. I now divide both sides by 5, and I wind up with a slope of negative 7 over 5 in front of the x, therefore the slope of this equation is going to be negative 7 over 5. Next, determine the slope of a line that is parallel to an equation in general form. How do I do this? Well, we know parallel slopes are the same, so I need to find the slope of this line by converting it into slope-intercept form. To do this, I need to isolate for y. How do I isolate for y or get rid of negative 3y on the right-hand side? I'm going to add 3y to both sides, which gives me 3y equals 5x minus 18. I now need to remove the 3 from the side with, uh, that y is on. It's 3 times y, so I'm going to divide both sides by 3, giving me y is equal to 5 over 3x minus 6. So, my original slope is 5 over 3. What would be the slope of the line parallel to this? It would be the same slope, or 5 over 3. Now, stop the tape and do the second one yourself, and we'll do it in a minute together. Okay, we're back. Again, what is my first step to find the slope that's parallel to this? Is to find the slope of the original equation by converting to slope-intercept form. So to do this, I need to isolate for y by adding y to both sides. Notice, this is now in slope-intercept form, so I don't have to do anything further, except notice that my slope is the number in front of x, or 7. So my original slope is 7, therefore the slope of the line parallel to this would also be 7. D. E. Determine the slope of the line that is perpendicular to this equation written in general form. Again, what do I know about perpendicular slopes? They are opposite and reciprocal. So, in order to find the original slope, I'm going to convert this to slope-intercept form. I need to isolate for y, so what I'm going to do is add subtract 6y from both sides, giving me x plus 13 equals negative 6y. I now need to isolate for y by removing negative 6. Because it's multiplying, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 6, which gives me the equation negative 1 over 6x minus 13 over 6 equals y. So my slope in the original equation is 1 over 6. Now, I need the slope that is perpendicular to this, which is opposite and reciprocal. Since the, the original is negative, its opposite is positive. Since the original is 1 over 6, its reciprocal is 6 over 1. That would be my final answer. Stop the tape now and try the second one by yourself, and we'll do it together in a second. All right, we're back again. How do I wind up doing this? I need to isolate for y to find my original slope. So to get rid of negative 9y on the left-hand side, I'm going to add 9y to both sides. I now need to get 9 
get rid of 9 and get y alone, or isolate for y. How do I get rid of 9? I'm going to divide both sides by 9, which gives me 2 over 9x minus 2 over 3 equals y. So my original slope is 2 over 9. What would be the reciprocal or perpendicular slope? It would be the opposite, which is negative, and reciprocal, which would be 9 over 2. So my answer is going to be negative 9 over 2. And that would be my final answer. Question 3. Convert to an equation in point-slope form going through the point 2, negative 3. So what do we need for point-slope form? We need the slope and we need a coordinate for one point. How do I find the slope, since I'm already given the coordinate, is I'm going to convert this to slope-intercept form, which means I isolate for y. So I'm going to start by adding 4y to both sides. I now need to get y alone, so to get rid of the 4, I'm going to do the, its opposite, which is to divide both sides by 4, leaving me with the equation of 3 over 4x plus 3 equals y. Now, what's important here is slope. So now I'm going to write out my general form for point-slope form. Now, the two things I need to fill in here are my slope, which I already have, and the coordinates for one point. Now, the point that they give us is 2, 3, negative 3. So I'm going to substitute negative 3 in for y, 2, and 2 in for x2. Notice my first bracket has a double negative, which I can simplify to y plus 3 equals 3 over 4 multiplied by x minus 2. That would be my final answer. Your turn. Do B, and I will do it in a minute. Stop the tape now. All right. Hopefully you've had a chance to try this. Again, first thing I need to do is have the slope for the original equation. To do this, I'm going to convert to slope-intercept form, which is isolating for y. So I'm now going to subtract y from both sides. Now, you may think y is alone or isolated, but it's not. There's a negative in front. So how do I simplify this? Well, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. I now have my new equation. And I know that my slope for this equation is negative 4. So in my equation for point-slope form, I need slope and one point. I do know that my slope is negative 4, so I'm going to replace m with negative 4. I now need to substitute in the values for a coordinate. I know that negative 3 is my y2. I'm going to replace that with negative 3 and my x2 with 2. Notice again, I can simplify my first bracket to y plus 3 equals negative 4 bracket x minus 2. I now com have completed this and can move on. Our final example is a word problem. It says determine an equation from a verbal situation. Gummy bears cost $3 per 100 grams, while Sour Patches cost $2 per 100 grams. Jimmy plans to spend $12 to purchase candy. A. Generate some data for this relation. Now, notice, the one thing that we need or don't have is how much of each type of candy he purchased. We know he's going to spend $12. Now, since neither of these is um, an independent or a dependent variable, we can place either one in for x or y. I've decided that I'm going to start with the amount of Sour Patches in grams for x and the amount of gummy bears in grams for y. Now, to generate data, what I'm the easiest way to do this is to start out with zero of one or the other. So I have decided that I'm going to start with zero Sour Patches. If that's the case, that means he has $12 to spend on gummy bears. So $12 divided by $3 per 100 grams means he's going to purchase four or 400 grams 
of gummy bears. Now, let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum and let's assume that he purchases zero grams of gummy bears. How many grams of Sour Patches would he buy then? Well, again, he's got $12. It costs $2 per 100 grams. So 12 divided by two is six or 600 grams. I now need to fill in the values in between. So halfway in between zero and 600 grams of Sour Patches is 300. So let's assume he buys 300 grams of Sour Patches. 300 times two is, 600, is $6 that he spent. That means he has $6 to spend on gummy bears. So $6 divided by $3 per 100 grams means he can buy 200 grams. Finally, I'm gonna find a point that's halfway in between 300 grams and 600 grams of Sour Patches. That is 450 grams. If he purchases 450 grams of Sour Patches at $2 per 100 grams, that means he's spent $9, meaning he has $3 left over. $3 divided by $3 means he can purchase 100 grams of gummy bears. I now have enough data that I can do B, which is to graph this data. Now, in my table of values, I used amount of Sour Patches as my X value. So I'm gonna use that as my um, X axis. Now, I've got 20 squares here and I've got to go from zero to 600. So I've decided I'm gonna use each box for 50 or each two boxes is 100. On the other side for my Y variable, I used amount of gummy bears. So I'm going to use that on my along my y axis. Again, I'm going to follow exactly the same um, setup for uh, my axes. I have a number of squares. I'm going to start and have to go from 0 to 400. So I'm going to use exactly the same scale using 50 for each square or 100 for each two squares. I'm now going to graph my points. When my amount of Sour Patches is zero, my amount of gummy bears is 400, which happens to be my y-intercept. When I have 300 grams of Sour Patches, I have 200 grams of gummy bears. When I have 450 grams of Sour Patches, I have 100 grams of gummy bears. And finally, when I have 600 grams, I have zero gummy bears. At this point, do I draw a line? And the answer is yes, because it's possible to have infinite values in between. Now, one last thing, don't forget all graphs need titles. The final question is to find an equation of the line in general form for this situation. Now, it's very hard to find the equation of the line in general form from a, a graph like this, but we could find it in slope intercept form and then convert it over. For slope intercept form, the first thing I need is slope. So because it's a graph, I can use rise over run. So what is my rise? I need to find two points. I'm gonna use 400, is my, which is also my y-intercept, and 300, 200. Now to go from 400 to 200, my rise is 200. To go from 200, zero, or zero to 300, my run is 300. Now notice this is negative, so my slope is gonna be negative 200 over 300, which I can simplify to two, negative two over three. I can now put this into slope intercept form and substitute in my values of negative two over three x and 400 for my y-intercept. I now need to convert this to general form. I get rid of the three by multiplying both sides by three. I now need to put all of my values on my left-hand side. So I'm going to add two X to both sides and subtract 1200 from both sides, which gives me an answer of two X plus three Y minus 1200 equals zero. This is my final formula.